Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this one, I just wanted to have a chat about what I think my personal opinion based on my own experience being a dropshipper since 2016, um, what it takes to be successful today. Obviously Q4 is just a couple of days away by the time this video comes out. Uh, there's a lot of people getting into the space, a lot of people starting dropshipping businesses, rushing to get things together um, in order to try and make the most of these final three months of the year. So I thought it'd be a good time to do a video like this, give you my opinion on how dropshipping has changed um, and help you avoid some of the kind of common mistakes or pitfalls um, or things I see people talking about and information people still putting out on YouTube. Um, so I thought I'd give you my thoughts on that. So when you look at any successful e-commerce business, then there's five things, okay? There's five things, all of relatively equal importance um, what I mean by that is that without one of them, the business will fail. You need to do all five of these things really well. Um, number one is your product, of course. Without a product, you have no means of making money. So what I'll do is I'll take you through these five things and I'll give you um, a couple of pointers um, and some of the kind of common places I see people failing in these areas to help you avoid them. So number one is your product. Without a product, you've got no means of making money. Number two is you need somewhere to sell the product. Obviously you need a Shopify store or any kind of website really. It doesn't have to be Shopify, of course. Uh, next thing is you need a supplier. Without somebody to supply the product, of course, the business is gonna fail. You need an ad creative, super, super important point. Um, of course, you need a way of kind of um, advertising your product. Um, when you have that content, when you have those creatives, then you need a marketing campaign, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on TikTok, it doesn't really matter. And what I'm gonna give you today is my point of view from a social, as somebody who has experience on Facebook. It's the platform I started on, so I tend to stick to what I know. Facebook is what I know, but the same goes for any kind of social media marketing. At the end of the day, it's interruption marketing. People aren't looking for scrolling through news feeds, looking for things to buy. They're scrolling through news feeds to check up on their mates and see what's going on in the world. So the way in which you advertise a product is pretty similar across all the social, all the, all the social platforms. So we'll start with the product. Um, arguably the most important thing. Um, number one, first and foremost, don't sell anything that you're not comfortable selling. Sell, sell something that you're happy to sell and happy to talk to people about. Um, this is a side note, but I've started businesses in the past selling products that I'm not embarrassed to tell people I sell. I've never sold anything like dodgy or um, untoward or anything like that. But just sell something that you're happy to, to talk to people about. Trust me, it makes a difference. The, the main point I wanted to make about the product is... The actual product you sell has to be unique nowadays. These product research softwares, they only do half the job in my opinion, or people look at them in the wrong way. So many people think, oh, you have to get the latest product research software to find the latest product. But the truth is, by the time you see a product on one of those softwares, it, it's too late. Like, I don't know of a single successful dropshipping business that made all their money by finding their product on a product research software. It just it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. You need to be selling something unique that consumers haven't seen before. So a much better way is to use these product research softwares. Find products that have, have that proven evidence. I talk about them on my channel every single week and take the concepts. So whatever that product is doing, whatever is satisfying for the customer, whether it's solving a pain point, whether it's making their life easier, whether it makes their perception on things different, whatever it is, take the concepts or the solution that product is providing, then find an alternative product that looks different but does exactly the same thing. I can't stress it enough. If you try and sell the same as everybody else, you're gonna be competing with everybody around the world, the entire dropshipping space, um, and it's just gonna be really difficult to do. It's certainly not gonna be sustainable. Number two, Shopify store or website that needs something to sell on. Consumers are so much more savvy nowadays. Um, I don't know what the statistics would be in terms of what percentage of certain age ranges or genders have actually purchased a dropshipping product or from a Shopify website um, or from like a Facebook ad or something like that. But I, I would imagine it's probably quite high. 
I would, it's probably over 30, 40%. In terms of how many people have actually seen like a drop shipping ad, it's probably 70, 80, 90%. Um, I would say in terms of dropshipping ads altogether, then the market is pretty saturated. <clears throat> so what that means is that when somebody goes onto your Shopify store, unless you are doing something drastically different to everybody else, then you will be in the same boat as everybody else. You need to use a theme or use third party apps um, or code it if you've got the capabilities to do so to make your website look different to a stereotypical dropshipping store. People, whether they notice it or not, subconsciously, when they will see your store, not to go too down a rabbit hole here, um, even if your brand name is different, if you have the same layout, the same GIFs, the same images, the same wording, um, that sort of thing, your business is gonna look the same, but just with a different logo on it. And if they didn't buy from the previous business or store they've seen, they're probably not gonna buy from yours either. So you have to set your store apart from everybody else. Super, super important part. Take the extra couple of weeks, it's two weeks max. Um, not even that, to be honest, because you could just order the identical products from Amazon or some other supplier to get it quick. Take your own images, take your own videos. Um, they don't even have to be like super high quality. I've, I've posted stores on my channel before um, that have been seven figure stores and their photography has just been taken on an iPhone. It doesn't have to be mega, mega high quality. It just has to be original and unique. Plus this is also advantageous um, and preferential in the eyes of the platforms you're gonna be advertising on. Think about it, Facebook doesn't wanna direct their traffic onto websites that they've seen time and time again to see images they've seen time and time again because their users will get sick of it, they'll get tired of it. And if you get sick and tired of using the platform because it's full of crap ads, what are they gonna do? They're gonna go use a different platform. So if you're using the same as everybody else, Facebook isn't gonna like that. You're gonna see your CPMs rise and the results on your ads are gonna be pretty crap. So product and store covered, sell a unique product, put a lot of time and work into making sure your Shopify store doesn't look like a stereotypical drop shipping one. Um, supplier, there's not a lot to say about suppliers, to be honest, a simple Google search, and there's lots of great suppliers people talk about on YouTube. Switching from supplier to supplier is a relatively easy process that you can do within a couple of minutes too. So if you find that one supplier isn't holding up their end of the bargain or there's issues with shipping times and quality, you can just switch to a different one. It's not gonna be the end of the world for you. Um, just always start local. Spend 10 minutes, just 10 minutes browsing Google, trying to find a local supplier in your country. If you live in the UK, Australia or America or even Europe to be honest in fact there's no excuses for anybody doing a dropshipping business not to find a local supplier you might have a product that you cannot find from a local supplier fair enough but you will be able to find a product with a local supplier even if you go with some of the um, dropshipping agents and suppliers out there most of them that are decent and worth their bread I think that's the saying I don't know or worth their salt I can't remember what the saying is but either way they should be able to deliver in like seven eight days max which is more than adequate to to jump start your drop shipping business with um, and get things going so supplier ad creatives <clears throat> I've kind of already touched a little bit um, on ad creatives before again I've never ever ever heard of a drop shipping business that has been mega successful that's just recycled content online, that uses other people's content. It just doesn't happen. So again, spend an extra week, and um, this could be in conjunction with taking your own product images, take your own videos as well. You haven't got to talk on camera, like there are AI softwares and services out there that will do that for you, but as long as the visual stuff is original, then in my opinion, that's the most important thing. If you're getting into the common and popular niches like um, dogs, babies, children, that sort of thing, you don't have your own kids or you don't want to film your own kids or use your own dog, which is like perfectly reasonable, then go on to Fiverr or Upwork. Find somebody that does this stuff for a living. You'll be able to get really good quality ad content um, for $100, $150. The alternative is to 
DM 50 people a day on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, whatever platforms, asking them, and you might be able to find somebody that will film you some content in return for being able to keep the product. You might, might be able to do that. The key takeaway here though is be original. Y you can, so you can, some of the people I work with that are in a bit of a rush to get things up and running, they wanna kind of test and validate an idea, get a proof of concept before they take that extra investment. You could use one of those softwares or services that do take um, existing content, recycle it, and put a voiceover or whatever. Um, you could use one of them to kind of test the waters initially, and if the numbers look good, then make the investment, you can do that, but it's not gonna be sustainable, and you're certainly not gonna get to, you might get to six figures using recycled content, but you wouldn't want that hanging over your head. You wouldn't want that message or email to come through at any point saying stop using our content and then literally have a business that's making six figures, just switch off overnight. So do it for a week or two. If it works out, get in like initial sales and things like that, make the extra investment um, into original content. Then we have another point as well actually on the creative uh, is I watch a guy on YouTube, yes, I still watch people on YouTube, um, called Sabri Subi. He's an awesome, awesome marketer. And I don't know if it's like a common saying, I just remember it because he said it. In fact, I think I read it in one of his books. He said it was 80 cents of every dollar spent on advertising um, is spent in those first two lines of primary text in your ad, um, and also in the first three seconds of the video. It's called the hook. So if you haven't been getting great results from your video ads, just switch up those first three seconds or those first two lines of text, run it again and see how it affects results. Um, super, super important. Then it comes on to the fifth and final thing, the fifth pillar I call it, which is um, the, like, the marketing campaigns, the actual running of the ads. Most people get into running ads and like they don't have a flipping clue what the data means, like what a CPM is, what a CPC is, what a CTR is. Um, or even how to like get access to what they need to be looking at. Don't let that be you because you will never make a single penny. I'm um, certainly not for longer than a couple of months unless you actually understand um, what the data means and, and how to find it too. So the key point that I wanna make clear in this one is to number one, understand the data, do a bit of research. Um, in fact, I can tell you now. So. When you're doing the initial tests and trying to kind of identify what your ideal audience is, there's three kind of key points of data-ish that I look at. Number one will be the amount of impressions because you can't make a judgment on anything if something only has a hundred impressions, that's not enough. So I try and get that up to at least a thousand if I'm honest. Um, number two is the CTR. So this is the link CTR as well. So this is the percentage of people who have seen your ad, who have then clicked your ad. So the higher that percentage is, the more interested that audience is, i.e. it's doing a good job, it's, it's a positive thing. And then the other one or other two, they're kind of closely linked, which is your CPM and your link cost per click. Link cost per click is super important because, um, again, it works in conjunction with the CPM. The higher your CPM is, naturally the higher your cost per click is going to be it's the joint together the hip um it doesn't matter how interested your audience is if you have like a 10 percent ctr but your cpm is ridiculous like 200 dollars, your click's going to be so expensive that it's just not going to be viable depending on what kind of product you're selling of course so number one is know your data and know what to look for um, and then number two is to follow the data as well and look at your breakdowns, look at your breakdowns. The amount of people that will spend, um, like like no joke, I've been with people or I've seen people spend $6 on an ad set and be like, I've not made a purchase, the numbers are really crap, I'm writing it off. $6 is just, it's such an incredibly low amount that nothing, absolutely nothing can be taken away from spending six dollars on an ad set like there's no accurate judgment whatsoever you can take away from spending six dollars on an ad set in 99 percent of cases the whole ad set won't have even reached like 500 people it's just not a good way to test things like to put this into 
uh, to use a metaphor or like more a better way to understand it right so if you went down to your local high street or shopping mall a place where loads of people gather to shop you had um, a product that you wanted to launch in the market so you thought right I'm gonna go do some product research and see if people want to buy my product you go up to the first person they say no I don't want it and instead of asking another person and another person and another person, you take that one customer's answer as representation for what the whole shopping mall, what the whole high street thinks. And you leave thinking nobody wants to buy the product. That's what you're doing when you only spend such a little amount on Facebook ads. If you work it out in terms of the amount of people the ad has reached and um, divided by the audience size, it'll be a fraction. It'll be 0.0000001% of the audience. And that's what you're doing when you're going down to the high street and only asking one person rather than the entire road or the entire mall. Um, it's just not an accurate representation. So um, before I go off on hours talking about Facebook ads or um, social media marketing, point number two is to, is to follow the data um, and stop wasting your money on demographics that aren't interested in your products look at the breakdowns for countries look at the breakdowns for age ranges look at the breakdowns for genders look at the breakdowns for placements facebook is really bad in my opinion um, at putting your money to good use so you have to make sure you put it to good use yourself and you do that by looking at the breakdowns removing the dead word removing the low ctrs removing the high cpcs um, and then that will in turn focus the platform to spend your budget in the right places. <laughs> so that was the five pillars. They're my points on the five pillars. Um, I really hope that you've learned something new from this video and it helps you um, with your dropshipping success. If you would like some extra one-to-one -one help, um, some extra guidance through this entire process and those points um, I just mentioned, make sure you check out links in the video description below. One of them will take you through to like a, it's like a two minute questionnaire um, which will let you book in a call with myself so we can jump on a Google Meet and have a chat and get to know each other, see what your experience is. Um, I can show you a couple of my stores and my results as well. Um, and then we'll have a chat about what you, what it is you want to achieve and if I can help you achieve it. If that sounds good, click that link, head over there now, get it booked in. Um, Q4 is a pretty busy period, so spots are very, very limited. Um, I only work with five people every single month. Um, so if that does sound of interest to you, um, try and get booked in as soon as possible. Cheers guys, enjoy, I hope you enjoyed the video um, and have an awesome Q4. Thanks.